Hey, Jason. How are you today? I'm good, Chris. How about you? Good. Happy New Year. I know. We're in 2023. <laughs> Can you believe that? I it it's it's a beautiful thing. It is. I'm you know this this new year is exciting. Every I mean I know I people probably get tired of that, but it, it there's new opportunities this year. It's 2023. Right. Like right. we're gonna what are we gonna do this year? What are we gonna conquer? I'm excited about this. You know I if 2023 is a step above 2021 20, 22. Yeah, if we can I'm, keep I'm going up that ladder. That. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean we you know thinking about the year ahead we've got. Um, two juniors that are going to hit their senior year. Oh wow! You know we've yeah, that's got exciting. Uh, we've got a wedding at the end of this year coming oh. up. You know, yeah. I mean, um, you know, one kiddo starting graduate school. I mean, wow! Business is taking off. I mean, twenty three has the potential to be a a really defining year. That's awesome, and hopefully in a good way. Right, 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 totally <laughs> right. Hope and hopefully um, for those listening that you know. Listened early back in what was that October November we were talking about goals. Hopefully you're you're ready for it, so you kind of have an idea of where yeah. you're going. Totally, right. Totally. So it's like because going into this year without a plan or out some without some guidance would be a little bit right. Would be a little bit rough, I think. Right from a business perspective. Yeah. So I'm 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 in, I'm anticipating 23 being a you know I don't I don't need a year that blows the doors off of the previous year, but one that's a step better. I'm I'm very happy with that. Just for the record, I would love this year to blow the doors off of this year. No, I'm not saying I don't <laughs> want it to. No, I want it to, and I, I guess we got to make it happen. I, I realized probably in according to Sean, it's if or when when not, not if. if yeah yeah yeah. Um, but I think I, I realized this when I was probably in high school that I like to prepare for the worst case scenario, so that when anything better happens. Than the worst case, mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, yeah, that's a win, right? <laughs> yep, I do do that too. I do do. So that. I have to counter that. So you're, that's probably a good call. Yeah, that's a good call. So what are at, we gonna... my, at the worst, may this year be a step above for sure, and for sure, I'd love for it to be surprising. So, so what are we talking about leadership wise? Because you know, I love I love talk, talking about these little tips. That I we, know. I mean, I mean, if we think I, I about, grow more through this too. Yeah, I mean, we're on episode fifty nine or something like yeah, that, something right? Like that. We've yeah. crossed our year mark, and you know, leading and serving is about you know how do we fight for the highest good of our community, for our businesses, mm-hmm. for our um, our families, right. you know, for those that that are in our circle of influence. How do we fight for their highest good? Right, and, and I think this last year we've shown that they don't contradict the blessings that come from doing that with your business. Like it's, they can run side right. by side. It's a win-win situation. Right. Your business is a vehicle to fighting for people's good. Right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed this last year. I have too. You I've know, learned these, a lot. Yeah. I mean, you and I sit around and coach each other right. before hit and record. And then we sit around and talk some more. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been good. And we get to pass it on to you guys that are listening. That's exciting. So, so, you know, we just want to encourage you to, uh, jump over to the website, leadingandserving.com. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, give us a like or view, send us a message, voicemail. Mm-hmm. Um, if you love what we're doing, you know, if we're, you know, if you want to hear more guests, more things, there's even a way for you to support us and uh, mm-hmm. just encourage us that way. Um, you know, there's a little coffee, and, coffee donate. And Dof, we, don't, you know, buy me a coffee. Kind right. Of, and so. you, we do read those just so you know, because oh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had lunch with one of our listeners. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's so right. It was it was great. It was that's great catching cool. up with him. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Yeah. So yeah. So let us know you're listening. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, as we hit the first of the year now, mm-hmm. um, one of the things that crosses my mind each January is rhythms of life, and that may not be a phrase that I, I'm a musician by heart, right? So okay. I think in terms of rhythm, <laughs> right? Um, but um, other people talk about rule of life or you know habits. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, just what's my routine. Right. Um, and so over the next four episodes, we want to talk about some of those different rhythms, some of those different rules of life, um, going from daily up to the yearly rhythms. Okay. What do we do? And so today let's, let's talk about daily rhythms, Mm -hmm. um, as a leader, as a business owner, or, you know, whatever it is that we're in our role for, what are our daily rhythms? Things that we need to make sure we hit each and every day that, that we're successful. Mm. Or that we feel like at the end of the day, hey, that that was a profitable day. Mm-hmm. For a Monday, that wasn't bad. Right. <laughs> you know. Those are real um, conversations. You know, too. you get to the end of the weekend going, ah, that was a that was a good weekend. Right. You know. Right. So 
um, just talking about some of those daily rhythms. Mm -hmm. um, for me, um, two of the two of the rhythms that I'm trying to put in daily. Okay, that I'm just not. I mean, I'm a. I'm, I enjoy spontaneity more than routine. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. talking about routine really kind of drains me. So, yeah. um, <coughs> but how do I start my day? Right. That I'm trying to be more intentional about those first few moments. Right. Yeah. Of all um, the way up to hours. Yeah. I mean, there there's certain music that I think grounds me in mm -hmm. life. Um, so being a musician, I enjoy certain albums, and mm -hmm. I put those on repeat. You know, the, the I don't know if you listen on Spotify or not, but um, they have the year-end uh, year review, the Spotify Wrapped, I think they call okay. it, right? <clears throat> and um, that album was, of course, my top album <laughs> for oh, the year. <laughs> that's awesome. And for that artist, I logged like 12,000 hours. Oh, my goodness. Uh, your minutes, sorry, 12,000 minutes, not hours. <laughs> okay. Um, listening to that one artist, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the course of the year. And I was like, man, I should, I should send him a note. <laughs> Say, hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I've got, I've got some spiritual practice. I've got some, you know, we all have physical routines, right? right. You know, whether that's shower in the morning or shower at night, you know, whatever that looks like, eating right. breakfast, you know, you the have. The stuff we get on our kids right. for. So I'm really trying to be intentional of those first moments of the day. Mm. Of how do I how do I be intentional of starting my day off on good footing? Mm -hmm. You know, for example, yesterday, not a good day to start off on good footing. No, <laughs> I was like, I mean, five minutes out of bed, and I was like, mm, we can just move on to next week. Right, just, I'm just going to go back. <laughs> and that was, I mean, this is a Wednesday that we're recording. That was right. Tuesday. I was done with the whole week on Tuesday morning. You yeah, know, by seven o five. And so, by seven o five, it's Tuesday morning. But what did I do? I turned on that album. Yeah. And I even propped my phone up on the shower door so that I didn't wake everybody else in the house. But right. I was like, I've got to get some, I've got to get grounded. Mm. And so over the next, you know, 30 minutes, I spent some intentional thought and, you know, the day didn't turn out that bad. That's awesome. But in that first moment, yeah, <laughs> I was ready to just crawl back in. Right. I love that. I love the idea that um, I, I, I've heard heard a dip from people talk about these things, especially in the mornings, mm -hmm. like, and how you execute your day is like a huge thing to start right. right out of the gate. Cause it's just like those habits that are in the morning oftentimes set your stage for the day. Yeah. So if you feel ready for your day, mm -hmm. then nine times out of 10, your day goes well, right. or you feel like you executed it well, even if you exactly. have a problem, right? Exactly. So, but if you wake up and you don't feel rested and you're struggling with what happened the night before and mm -hmm. like, like then you your day's off already, right? So the more than likely, it's just going to empower that ability to recognize that the today's not going to go well. Exactly, <laughs> it's time to go back to bed. <laughs> exactly, and that's where tools like you know we spent a lot of time on the peace index this last year. Yes, you which, know of looking at your peace index daily um, can mm -hmm. be an excellent practice for first thing in the morning. Yeah, yeah, to recognize. Um, it. I'm probably more of a weekly on the peace index. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's definitely a daily rhythm there I, for me. I definitely review it pretty regularly. It's not, I, I think I do it more than weekly just because I'm, I'm, I've found comfort in recognizing, like using that as my tool to help me understand what's off that maybe I don't mm -hmm. quite recognize. Right. And that's what I really appreciate about that tool. Right. So the morning times are probably one of those times that I probably need to tap into mm -hmm. that a couple more times. Right. And that tool has even become a resource um, even though I don't use it daily to assess my piece, mm -hmm. um, I use it daily to talk to others. Yeah. I mean, you and I do that. Oh, for sure. You know, we walk in the room, we're like, hey, how's it going? Well, no, where's your piece at? <laughs> where's right. your index at? Right. right. What's your number today? Yeah. And so, you know, that ha that has been a great common language with relationships mm -hmm. that I have of, you know, understanding where other people are at too. So for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people start their day with, um, you know, it's an excellent opportunity if you're a, a, a list maker, mm -hmm. you, you offload everything into the list that morning. Right. Get you know? it off your brain. Right. And we'll, we'll get to this in a minute, but what do you, how do you end your day? Some people do that at night. Yep. They offload. Here's what I need to, here's my biggest priorities. Right. Tomorrow. You know, um, you know, I mean, a lot of people do things differently. They do. And so, you know, things lean into your personality different, into your voices and things like that. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. The other thing I'm trying to be intentional about is the end of the day. Okay. What am I doing at the end of the day to review um, and reflect so that tomorrow is better? Hmm. Um, so I, I do a practice um, called the examine, 
Um, it's an ancient Jesuit practice. Um, we talked about this through the Peace Summit and stuff like that. That um, just reviewing of you know what was great, what am I thankful for, what went well mm. today, and you know just five seven minutes total in yeah. all of these things. There's there's three things, you know what went well, mm-hmm. what was off, what could I have done better, right? You know, and so I make some notes of like okay when I see that relationship again, mm-hmm. when I run into that person, I'm gonna work on this with right. that person, you know, or whatever, whatever was just off, you know, mm-hmm. and it's not a beat myself up thing. It's a liberate, you know, how can I liberate myself to, to be better? Right. And then last thing is, you know, what's for tomorrow. Um, mm. So I'm trying to make an intentional practice of checking my calendar oh, nice. um, for the next day. Yeah. Before um, you go to bed? Yeah. Because I don't do it in the morning. Well, okay. I'm more of a, Hey, we just had lunch. Now I should look at the calendar and see what I got for right. the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess there's there's pros and cons to both, right? Like for for the person that is just needs to know, hey, I, this I got got this going on tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I just need to know that I'm I'm ready for it and I'm in a good spot for it. You know right. what I mean? Right. Then there's probably people like probably more my line where it's like I'll deal with tomorrow tomorrow. <laughs> but right. I but I probably right. what I don't do, and even in conversing with you, I've realized that I don't. Uh, examine my day, if that makes sense. Like, I don't mm-hmm. take the time to recognize um, what went well, what didn't go well, what should I change for tomorrow, and what needs to right. be done tomorrow. So right. I probably need to work on that. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a good call. Yeah, and then um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, there's a book by Kerry Newhoff. Okay. Um, and you spell Newhoff, N-I-E-U-W-H-O-F. Okay. So there's like three vowels together. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, um, I didn't know you could do that either. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but his book's called At Your Best, and he talks about basically your daily energy rhythms. Hmm. And these are different for different people, right? You okay. Know, when you lean into the five voices, you know, creatives and guardians are going to have very different bodily rhythms and right. mind rhythms, you know, and, and things. And so he says, you know, to look at your day in blocks in three different categories, red, green, and yellow. Okay. Red meaning I am not physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I'm not ready to do any work. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not good at it during this period of my day. Okay. Right. So, you know, for some people that might be the 2 p.m. slump. Mm-hmm. They've had lunch and now they're just like, oh, right. how do I get through the rest of this day? Um, you know, and then your yellow area is like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling engaged, mm-hmm. but I'm not ready for the big stuff. Okay. So this might be making phone calls, checking your inbox, returning all the emails, doing your calendar planning, you know, whatever, you know, filling out paperwork, whatever your job requires of like, yeah, I can get that done just about any part in the day, except for that red time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your green zone is like your core energy. This is when I'm at my best. Mm. Oh, Hey, there's the title of his book at my best, at your best. best. Right. Right. So that green area is I am at my best during these moments. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I'm going to put the most important work that I have to do. Okay, that's okay. good. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, and so for me, um, I like being more relational in the mornings. Mm-hmm. You know, and that so that's um, I'm not ready for my green zone, mm. and so I, I enjoy catching up with people. You know, finding out hey, what's going on in your <coughs> world? How you doing? Mm-hmm. The I enjoy doing those types of meetings in mm. the mornings more. My core time starts after lunch sometimes. Oh, my nice. green area is when everybody else is not in the green area. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's, you know, uh, square peg, round hole. Um, yeah. So thinking through your rhythms like that of, you know, I have I have eight eight hours to work. Yeah. Here is where I need to do lunch mm-hmm. and I need to maybe go, you know, you know, run a mile during my lunch period. Right. And come back so that I can do yellow work afterwards or nice. I'm gearing up for my green work. You know, right. so um, and then scheduling your day appropriately. Mm. Yeah. Of putting those tasks where they need to be and things like that. That's good. And so understanding your rhythms that way um, can really help you move through your through your day well. Right. And so um so yeah, that's kinda That's what good. You got. Well, you, no, you're good. You that's a, good. You looked like you had a thought on your mind. Well I think that um I'm think I'm thinking about our interview today and I'm thinking Ooh. about the way he talks about these things and I was like, you know, our inner the gentleman that we're they getting ready to interview today, like he is, he is at his best a lot and has done a lot. And I just, right. and in talking with him, I've learned a lot in in how he focuses and how much <coughs> of he works on his rhythm 
and trying mm-hmm. to set up his day. And because uh, I've followed him for a while on Facebook, and, and right. every once in a while he posts things, and the things that he posts are always neat and um, right. and uplifting and positive. And I, I've really appreciated them. So I'm looking forward to interviewing him today. But I think in um, even he, in, in him planning and his rhythms, I, I bet he's probably got a rhythm to his the way he does things. Because right. I just um, one of the things he does is donuts. Like he always brings donuts, and one of the I'm sure that's in his rhythm that he's the donut guy. You well, know? now I'm excited. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, Sean Daniels is our guest today, and okay. our, he is a realtor. All right, and here on the South Side, and. Um, he is a dynamite realtor, but he services so many different areas. So I'm looking forward to jumping into that conversation with him today. That sounds good. I'm looking forward to that too. So, so. Let, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's do it. We'll see you in just a moment. Well, Sean, thanks for joining us today. It, it is great to have you. I know that um, I'm super excited that you're hanging out with us today because I know that you're very busy in the business in the uh, real estate world. But let's back up. Tell us a little bit about, because I know the last time, let's see, the first time I remember meeting you was in high school. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been a day or two since that. So give us a little bit of update on what's happened in the last couple of years. <laughs> well, it's, it's very interesting. It, you know, from high school, um, I started doing night, night school at IUPUI, going in the Kelly School business. Mm-hmm. Um, through high school, I started working at Discount Tire in between football and uh, met probably one of the most amazing mentors I could have met at a young young adult person's life, you know, mm-hmm. as Kenny Boyce at Discount Tire. And, um, you know, he helped, I think, mold who I am today. You know, I obviously want to give my parents credit, but, like, nobody molds you like your first real boss. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't yeah. a boss. He was a friend. He was a mentor. And, you know, that, that guy, he... He'd run after people in the parking lot if they left because of price mm. and make sure he, he did what it take to earn their business, toss the keys of his car if they get something to drive. But, you know, from there, I, I didn't – I never did finish my Kelly School business stint just because financially I started making uh, a substantial amount of money. At, mm-hmm. at my, in my early 20s, I moved on to the dealership world and uh, started working as a service consultant. Okay. And, you know, from what? the skills – what, what does that do? What does somebody do uh, when they're doing so that? So service consultant's a guy you don't want to see. It's a guy when you, your car breaks down or need an oil change or need to spend money or just inconvenience because you got a warranty repair on a brand-new car. Okay. I'm the one you come in and consult, you know, what needs to be done. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when I first got there, what I, what I witnessed was the doors would be down, cars would be lined up out there, and, you know, we'd just all be sitting there waiting for 7 o'clock and then go help these people out. Mm-hmm. So what I started doing is going out there with my sheet of the appointments and figuring out who's with who, giving them their tags, and then obviously uh, helping the ones out that didn't have business because most, most people don't understand that's a 100% commission job. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So just like Kenny, um, you know, the people that didn't have transportation at the time or needed something, as I got to know <clears throat> my clientele better, I'd give them my car to drive. Oh, wow. You know, and... and, and um, you know, fast forward to real estate, I had some really good clients of mine um, that used me just because of that. You know, they had a business, and I'd go um, drop my vehicle off at their house, pick their car up, and bring it to them. But when it comes down to it, it's all about the people and customer service and how you take care of them. That's so true. You know, if you take care of them, they're going to take care of you. And, um, you know, from there, I, I built my house at 23 years old, still doing the same thing. Um, had three roommates move in, so you know they were paying me about four hundred bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. I was helping them; they were helping me. Um, <clears throat> met my beautiful wife, you know, uh, you know, husband of uh, two beautiful daughters. That's awesome. Um, you know, and we kind of got into a rut to where we weren't growing anymore. You know, we were making great money. Um, you, you, when you say we, you talk about you and your wife. Oh yeah, we're a team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so it's, by this point, you're married. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I'm just, just no, sure no, I no. I, I met her through a, a friend of mine that I had finite math with when I was still at Kelly. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. So they they lived all the way uh, what Seymour, Indiana. She was from Comiskey, and I was in the wedding, and we met, and you know, ever since then we kind of that's awesome. Just kind of been together, and and been a you know, it wasn't always 
you know, rainbows and sunshine. No, nope. you know? I mean, <laughs> it never. It, it took a lot of work. Right. You know, people see what they see online. Yep. But you know, she'll have females ask her every now and then, is it like that all the time? And she'll tell them no. Mm-hmm. You know, we we had our ups and downs. You mm-hmm. know, we we worked through it. We had a good support team too, our family. And um, you know, she was working Walmart distribution center before we had kids and then mm-hmm. she moved up here finally and lived with me and roommates slowly moved out um <laughs> yeah and uh and then she's worked for a construction company and then when the bottom dropped out i think it was 05 08 08 08 um she lost her job and you know we were still living very well where we didn't have any car payments and I just had the house payment and i said honey you know the amount of money we're paying for goddard right now versus your drive back and forth i go why don't you just go be a nurse? I go, you said you wanted to be a nurse. You said that a couple times. I go, why don't you do that? And she did. Oh, that's awesome. Hardest thing I ever seen anybody go through. Really? This woman, um, please don't kill me for saying all this, but, you know, she she was pregnant part of this time too. And, and the test, once you get into nursing school, she was at U of I, they're so stringent that if you drop below a certain um, grade mm-hmm. level, you're out. Really? And then you still owe that money, right? Oh, wow. Right? So she's doing the hardest thing she's ever done in her life next to birth and our children. Right. Um, and, you know, she's so stressed out, she starts losing her hair. Oh, my goodness. And that's, you know, that's nobody stress. really noticed it, but, you know, she did she start losing her hair. And obviously she has, you know, full head of hair to this day. But, right. but you know, I helped empower her to do that. My family helped empower her to do that, something she never thought she could ever do in her life. Mm. And from there, she didn't let me give up my dreams. You know, fast forward another three or four years down the road, I was just in my rut still. We weren't really growing. We were just stagnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody was telling me I should be a real estate agent. You'd be perfect at it, perfect at it, right? Mm -hmm. And I went and uh, did the 90-hour course um, and did the the four-hour test. And I'll be completely honest, and I'm transparent about that test. It's the hardest test, you know, most people do take. Right. Uh, some people pass it the first time. And uh, I did the state test. I passed. So the four-hour test is broken up in two, two bodies. The state test I passed on the second attempt. The, 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 the other body, it took me another eight attempts. So ten, ten attempts at this test. Oh, wow. That's, you know, four hours long. Right. Which, which is, each is two. So after the state, I had two. I man cried in the car on the sixth failure. Like, yeah. like, after, like I failed it the fifth time. And you had to get like a 75. And I kept getting a 74 or 73. And the, the killer thing is they don't tell you what you get wrong. Oh, that's horrible. So you can't. So you can't even learn from it. No. No, you can't learn from it. Um, and like on the fifth time, I got out to my car and I, I got online real quick and got it again. And then the sixth time, I just I was devastated. I was, felt like a failure. Uh, mm-hmm. ugly man crying on the way home. And, you know, my wife, God bless her. She's just, she's just like, Sean, they just haven't given you the right test yet. You know, and I had some good friends of mine because I wasn't announcing all this failure. Right, right. And I didn't give up. And, you know, now uh, uh, I'm, I'm ranked 120 out of 9,000 agents. So you, so back, just trying to get a timeline to that, right? Sure. We're working at um, a dealership. Mm-hmm. Got kids, married, so we're down the trail of, you know, trying to do the family thing alongside of all this, right? Yeah. I mean, she she went down along the side. She was obviously pregnant while she was trying to do a nurse thing. And then did she get established, and then you started your real estate yes. gig? Or did, okay. Yes. So then now you're going through the turmoil of trying to change, yes. right? I mean, because it's not easy, right? It's no. like you said, it's not always rainbows, right? And it's not, it's also not um, easy to even consider transitioning from a place of being in comfort because I mean I don't know how many people I've talked to that were like I just got a good job I mean it's almost like I've heard, I don't know if you've heard this before but have you heard of the golden handcuffs I have not so the golden handcuffs is a situation where nine out of ten people sit because they're they're paid well they're paid well enough to not change yeah and but they're not doing what they really want to be doing oh lot and it's a yeah. hard spot to be in because you know, it's like, well, do I upset the apple cart and kind of like take it all, you know, take that risk? Because, I mean, in the entrepreneur world, you know, the entrepreneur world is not, um, there's nothing guaranteed. 
Nothing. Right? Nothing. So at the end of the day... Or your job's not guaranteed either. Right, exactly. I well, mean, that's what I most people think it is. Right, exactly. And you, you felt that from, you know, with your wife losing her job. Oh, yeah. So I feel like many people in that... In in the in in their jobs, rec- think that they're just they're good. Yeah, it's just good. It's just I'm not going to change because it's it's too much they're work. Comfortable. Yeah, and they're comfortable. They're comfortable. Um, so you decided to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, your wife you encouraged her to she be uncomfortable. First, yeah, extremely. But you you were supportive in through the process. Then she did encourage you to be un- uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. And so how long did this this testing go on? Uh, you get 12. So just for the, like the test, the real estate test, yeah. you get 12. Yeah. Once you pass your 90 hour course, you got 12 months to pass that. Okay. So it, it's probably a good six, seven months, which is um, kind of, I mean, it's probably six, seven was months of failure. Pretty defeating. <laughs> yeah. It? Six, seven months. Did six, you question whether you wanted to continue to do oh, this? Of course. Every okay. day, every day, every right. day, you know, I, I knew I need, I knew I needed to change. Okay. Um, you know, and I tried a mowing business, and I, I thought about a t-shirt business, and, you know, how do I get out of this industry that I don't not love? I love right. what, I love the people I met and my, my coworkers. I just, I was, you know, I didn't hate the job anymore. I just wasn't thrilled to be there anymore. And mm-hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, what's the word? Content? Um, challenged. Or challenged. Oh, that's a didn't good Didn't feel one. challenged. I was plateaued. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, finally the light came on, and I, I passed that test, and I didn't start advertising that I was a real estate agent. It was all word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still working a full time job, and everybody in the industry is like, "You got to quit your full time job." You gotta, like, how do you do that when you yeah. got bills, right? Um, and kids, and kids, right? So you know, I didn't do that, and I sold like nine houses the first four months. The um, following year, I sold about seventeen houses. Mm-hmm. The year after that, forty four houses. And this is no team, no transaction coordinator. Tra- like like a lot of agents, they have teams, which you know, good for them, and but some take credit for their sales. So this is just me with no team, and forty four is about the average. You know, maybe a five or six team would do. So those first was that the first two years? That's the uh, first three years. First three years. Well, time. really, the first year wasn't the first year. Okay, it was like three is like four or five months. Okay, so then during that time, had you quit your other job? Nope. So you're working two jobs for the first three years. Still, still working, working two jobs, full time jobs. Um, going to that the year of forty four deals, and then, then last year just eighty three deals blew up. Eighty three deals, all on my own. Um, yeah, it, it was it was life changing, and financially, um, we had a goal to pay everything off before I left my other job, mm. right? Because real estate can be like this. Yes. Any job can be like that. But when you're right. commission based, you know, there's your ups and downs, and I I didn't want one. I didn't want money to drive my my um, conversations with my clients because mm-hmm. when somebody's um, suffering or, or doing without when it comes to financials yep you know people can smell that they yep. can they can hear that so I wanted to make all my decisions to be genuine for my clients mm-hmm. um, so we kept paying our bills off we paid our college off we paid the cars off and then um, uh, May of last year uh, we paid the house off Congratulations! You know, the That's house, awesome. The house we built, I built when I was twenty-three. Right. Um, we haven't moved. That's awesome. You know, awesome. we stayed in the same house. We just keep um, growing our our net worth <coughs> with it and our network. Mm-hmm. You know, again, thanks for having me. And um, and now you know, I have my own brokerage. Started in March, and you know, I've done. I'm going to close out seventy deals this year, but really, I I want to quit hearing the word I. Mm-hmm. I want to hear, you know, they or we, because it's all about the team now, mm-hmm. right? My numbers are still my numbers, and I let them have their numbers, but I want to grow them. Mm-hmm. You know, I got one agent in particular, and I don't want to mention their name, but, you know, they were kind of suffering on the financial part of it, and, you know, they didn't have a steady income. And I said, look, I go, Dot hires real estate agents. Hmm. You can I be, didn't know that. You can be doing eminent domain. For for in dot totally requires real estate. Totally require quite, totally requires real estate, right? Yeah. Um, and it's like thirty five, forty grand a year. It's steady income. It's it's pension. It's you know a good retirement. You know when it comes to your insurance, and and they don't I, you know I, I don't think they mind if you're doing real estate. You know as long as it's not on their hours. Mm-hmm. So why can't she do what I did? Run, you know, run two working jobs. seven to three. 
show houses in the evening, you know. Right. And I was like, hey, I'll I'll help your clients out if it's during the day. Right. We'll work something out. Let's right. let's let's build your financial platform so you can catapult and get to where you want to be. Your dreams are going to be. Right. Because I didn't get here without helping people or people helping me. Right. And sometimes you got to ask for it. Right. Sometimes you got to give it. Not everybody wants it. And right. If they don't, then you just move on. Like, hey, I'm. It's not, okay. Not trying to push myself on you. I just right. I just see the potential in you and. And you'll have some people just, you know, they're, like you said, they're happy where they're at, mm -hmm. right? They're, right. They're, and it's just fine. Which is fine. Yeah. Totally I mean, fine. That's, that's okay as long as they're happy with it, right? Yep. But yep. For, for people like you and me, we just keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you keep going. And and it's crazy. Like, I feel like I'm still the same person I've always been, even even though we've changed financially. We've changed um, with our, our company and our business, and we're growing. And what people, some people say me and perceive I still feel like I'm the same person. Right. Our, our circles have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a really uh, cool guy on on um, podcast, Glenn Lundy, um, hashtag Rise and Grind. Mm -hmm. and he talks about the tables you sit at. You know, yeah. The, you know, and other people talk about this too. So maybe a cliche, but it really it resonated to me. Mm -hmm. And when I told you earlier um, outside the podcast, you know, we kind of got into a rut. Yeah, we were making good money. She, she, you know, but you before know, before real estate, right? Before real estate, but we were <clears throat> just going through the paces. You know, we play cards and and drink and you know, do all these things that were mindless and mind numbing, but we weren't elevating ourselves to the next level. Mm. Um, and and we don't do those things anymore. And some of the people that were in our life then, not that we're better than them, no, just we don't do it anymore. And and you know, we may have different people at our table now, right? Um, and it's okay. And that's fine. And sometimes it's healthy. It is healthy. No, it's, it's, it, to, to me, I feel like not that we're alcoholics or they were alcoholics, but I feel like if all you do is hang out at the bar and drink every day, or that's all your friends do. Yep. You're going to do that. Right. Right. We, right. we are what we eat. You're a sum of your friends. You are. A, that's good. That some, or oh, I read that somewhere. That's not mine. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's, Hey, <laughs> but, stand on the shoulders of giants, man. Right. That's not, exactly right. That resonated to right. you. So um, you know, in this this uh, this new book I'm reading, it talks about, and I actually I'm listening to it because I can't sit down and read a book long enough. Yeah, yeah I gotta here. have audio books. But uh, he talks. I love Audible. He, he compares, and I posted it on my uh, my Facebook today. He talks about how uh, you know when a parachuter, you know, drop and drop, and all of a sudden his parachute goes up and it's tangled. Mm -hmm. Instantly, your mind wants to go and fix the tangle when you have a backup chute already. Mm. You know. So yeah. it's cutting that dead weight away and knowing when to cut it away. Right. Because he said so many times people, <clears throat> you know, hears these stories and they don't look at their, how, whatever that's called for the, how, uh, how close they are to the, the ground. Elevation. The elevation. And it's too late. Mm. So I, I think really what he was meaning there is don't wait till it's too late. Yes. Yep. Cut the dead weight. And be done. And be done and, and keep pushing play, keep moving forward, keep leveling up, right. what, whatever we listen to and hear, right. all those things mean something. And That's awesome. And um, But we, it all starts with you. Yep. And it starts with consistency and getting up every day and doing it. Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. Nope. It doesn't. And, and it, Back to your point, it's not all rainbows. It's not right? all rainbows. <laughs> it's not. It's not. There's a lot of grit in there. And yeah. uh, Angela Duckworth book, I'll plug her in there. That, that word grit. Yeah. I mean... Uh, you, it, What's the name of her book? Uh, it's it's called Grit. It's called Grit. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. No, you're I good. haven't read. I yeah. never read that one. Yeah, it's a good book. It's a it's a really good book. There's another one called The Energy Bus. I can't remember who who um, who wrote that, but it talks about kicking the the energy vampires off your bus. Okay, nice. Because nice. people will suck that energy from you. They totally will. Right? right. You know, it's sometimes you waste time with people who aren't in it. Mm -hmm. And if they're not in it, that's cool. Yeah. But don't be a fixer. Mm. You can spend your time trying to fix people that don't want to be fixed. Yep, and and that's that dead weight. Yep, you know. So did you learn some of that through your process? Or oh, looking yeah. back, do you, do you do you recognize some of those things that you realized maybe you were struggling with at the time, and now you've come back and you're like, oh, that's why that was such a headache. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And and just bosses over the years, you know, like Kenny, he set the tone high for anybody who was my my manager or boss. Mm -hmm. Um. And you learn from the good and you learn from the bad. Yeah. So you learn what not to do from the bad. Like, I don't want to treat anybody like that because that's how I was treated. Right. But I feel like I'm getting off topic. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Well, and truly, it's a, this is about your journey. Like, that's what we love to talk about with people. And you just, 
it's awesome to see that you've come from, you know, a situation where you were growing like crazy and then you kind of, you felt what you, what you're, if I'm, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but like you felt like you were stifled there for about, what, 20 years? You oh, said? yeah. Well, yeah. But yeah. You I'd say, I'd say probably the last 10 years of that 20 years. Okay. You know, to where I really want to get into management, you know, want it to kind of grow and see what that was like and experience that. And it wasn't about the monetary money, the value is just more of getting out of that same routine mm. day yeah. in, day out, right? And if you don't change the routine, you're not going to go anywhere. So I felt like if I got in the management role, I'd go somewhere and I got in the management role and it was fun growing my team and mentoring people, and, but I still wasn't happy. Like I, mm -hmm. I always wanted to own my own thing. Right. I wanted to have something that I could pass a legacy down right. to my girls, to our family. Um, and yeah, it's great to build somebody else's business. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people do that. Right. But I want it to has its place too. I want to build my own. Right. <laughs> I want to build yeah. I want to build my own and, and if I can help others do it along with it, just like my agents that come and join me, I'm like, hey, you ever get to the point where you're like, Hey, I want to start my own brokerage? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be that broker that's just yeah. Going to shun you because that happens. Really, it happens in every business. Oh, you know, I'm sure. I'm when sure. you leave somewhere, like oh, like, like they, they take it personal. Yep. To me, like if they're going to leave me, then I feel like I've done a good enough job and coach them. Right. Because not everybody wants to do that. They want right. the stress of all the behind the scenes stuff that, it, that everybody doesn't see. Right. But the ones who do, if 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 I coach somebody, coach somebody good enough that they get to that level, I'm winning. Mm -hmm. Well, my guess is that your previous coaches, Kenny being one of them, oh, yeah. he probably wasn't super upset. He was probably excited for you just because of who you are and all the things that you had learned. Yep. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That he, makes, that's huge in yeah. a coach. No, he, he, he was definitely uh, – to the day, like, I'll, I'll go visit him and really? say hi that's to awesome. him and thank him for just being him. And really, it was just him being him. Yeah. You know, a veteran, you know, uh, been, been through a lot, you know, mm -hmm. traveled a lot and – uh, you, you can't change sometimes. You can't teach sometimes who you are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had another great mentor, Jim Harden, you know, from Bill Estes Chevrolet. Um, you know, he's since moved to Hubler. But, you know, he, he actually, you know, when I'd have ideas, this is like kind of the last stint in the business. Uh -huh. When I'd have ideas, he listened. Mm. And sometimes he'd implement them and see how they work. Really? Super intelligent guy, like just um, – plethora of knowledge you know but just listening to somebody sometimes that's all they want hmm, that's Cause, awesome cause so many people don't <laughs> yeah. they don't in, in all the everyday life they don't listen um and and that's something i've tried to get better at because because mm -hmm. i'm a type a and i talk right. and go 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 and i gotta sit back sometimes and be like hey what's what do they want right well and i know that in your current role right you're probably got to do a lot of listening oh yeah right because you got to know i mean selling people's houses you know, for majority of people out there, this is their biggest asset. You know, oh, yeah. the, their biggest asset, their biggest decisions are often come with their house uh, being whether to move or not. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, I think that's one of the top stressors. It, it and, is. And it so is. The, the, you probably, through that journey of selling a house, you probably bump into people when they're happy and also when they're sad, you know, at, at I, I some deal, level. I deal with it all. You know, it's, you know, I've also done a bunch of uh, divorce cases, unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. But somebody has to help these couples out. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, hey, I'm not here to be a mediator. Uh, it's unfortunate what you're going through. But I want to, at the end of this transaction, be a friend to each one of you to where when you want to do this down the road, you think of me. Mm. And that's going to be difficult because, you know, I'm, I'm working with both of you. And, and I'll tell you right now, I haven't had one that's – I had one that got back together. They got back together during the transaction. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, just... yeah, yeah. But I haven't had a situation yet to where – I haven't made a relationship with them. Um, That's it, really hard. And, and I've talked people out of buying houses, just regular deals. Yeah. You know, I had a young couple. They were looking at a, a, a log home. And log homes come with a lot of maintenance. They do. It was their first home, too, and they loved it. Oh, wow. You know, hmm. or, or people look at these Victorian houses. Yeah. And there's, like, lead windows, and there's 40 of them. And, like, guys, it's going to cost a fortune to heat this for one. Yep. Uh Old houses have old problems. You know, all they're beautiful the when they're fixed up. <laughs> uh, and I love selling them, and I love walking through them and seeing all the cool stuff from back in that day. Right. But, you know, I try to think of them like who's taking – like a lot of these people are younger people too. Like 
what would I want my kids being told right now? Mm-hmm. Um, or a fresh family coming in and it's a neighborhood and, it, and, and they pick a, uh, like a main drag in the neighborhood. That's mm-hmm. a big pass through. Right. Right. And you got kids are going to be riding their bikes. Mm-hmm. People don't think about these things they because don't. they're so wrapped up in the lending part of it, the pre-approval, you know, getting all the paperwork to them. And then they're excited. Mm-hmm. I'm pre-approved. We're going to get to look at some houses. And, and I got to like kind of, I got to point things out. Hey, the railroad track's going to be a problem. Mm. You know, it's a cemetery an issue. I mean, it's quiet neighbors, but <laughs> they're cool looking at the graves every day. You know, right. like, like, you know, none of those things are, are terrible things, but, you know, some people are cool, some people are not. But if right. I don't point them out, I feel like they may have buyer's remorse in the future. I'm just not doing my job. Mm, you know, I'm not, good. I'm not an uh, inspector, but I've seen enough inspections that I can kind of try and point things out while mm-hmm. I'm walking. Is that peeling paint going to be an issue? You know, FHA loans, if it's got peeling paint. That's a problem. You know, it's more than likely, um, or VA, right. more than likely the appraiser is going to flag it. So mm-hmm. is this something that I go and have a conversation with the other agent mm-hmm. and say, hey, I see you got VA or FHA on here. I got a VA or FHA client. Uh, if this gets flagged, is your person cool painting that? Yep. You know. So you're ahead of the curve. Yeah, because I don't want my huge. I don't want my people paying for an inspection and appraisal, and now they spent like fifteen to two thousand of their own money that they ha- don't have a lot of money already. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's never going to happen. Oh wow, that's awesome. Right. Right. Because that person's not prepared to do that, and I've gone and painted stuff before. Mm-hmm. I've helped my clients out. I had a barn get flagged, and I had a fix a board on her or something. He couldn't do it because he's at work. And I went over there and put a board on her, screwed it in, had the appraiser come back. Said, All right, passed. <laughs> it, it cost me a little bit of my time, and I had an extra board. No, awesome. You know, but that was me serving them, mm-hmm. going above and beyond to, to, to help them out. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's, what's, that's what it's all about. I've cleaned. My daughter and I cleaned a house before. Oh, they're serious. Oh, this guy was a bachelor. He was awesome. You know, he was a cool dude. But bachelor man for like just like he was probably his thirty eight at the time. Yeah. And my daughter wanted some new ear pods and I said, Cool, you wanna make hundred and fifty bucks, we're gonna go clean this house. Yeah. And she did. <laughs> She's wiping banisters down. You know, I think she was probably thirteen or fourteen at the time. She's mm-hmm. seventeen now. And I got pictures of her doing it, you know, we're wearing masks and, Right. Uh, That's awesome. <laughs> you know, cleaning toilets, you know. Like yeah. Doing nice. what it takes. But right. but but I wanted the guy's house to sell and I wanted it to to, to get a, a, people coming in, not like, oh, it's dirty, you know, mm-hmm. like a dirty car. Yeah. You know, car lots don't put those on a lot dirty. They don't. Um, and this guy didn't have time to do it. I didn't yep. charge him nothing. My daughter and I had some good time, good camaraderie doing it. She got to earn a buck and realize what daddy does. Yep, mm-hmm. that's huge. You know, so, um, yeah, that, that was really cool. I'm trying to think of some other cool experiences. My, my daughter <laughs> and I, just, my daughter just started driving, and last night I took her for a ride, and we drove by one of the houses that she helped me with. We flipped a house over not too far from where we live, and one of the things that she was doing was taking the trash and throwing it into the bed of this um, dump truck. And I drove by it, and I said, you recognize that house? She said, no. I said, <laughs> remember throwing all that trash out of that garage into that dump truck, and you were breaking it and having a good time? She's like, is that the house? I was like, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's those moments. It's experience, man. It's those moments yeah. of, of camaraderie that you – they they made some money that day and they were hot, but they had. I mean, she remembers it to this day. It's like that was a blast. I love that. And you don't get that back. <laughs> nope. You don't, you don't get that back. You know, I I always ask them, hey, you want to go with me on this uh, showing? Mm-hmm. You can go turn all the lights on. You know, I, you know, whatever. Try and keep them involved. Right. Um, you know, I had another really fun deal with uh, a gal. She lost her spouse. They had a cool horse farm, and um, good old Nancy. You know, didn't know what to do. And she found me on a condo I was going to sell, and I, you know, that was already pending. So I get back to her house, and I'm like, well, let's do an estate sale, mm-hmm. you know, and because um, she had all these deer heads and buffalo heads and hmm. stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, you, you, we're going to need to find somebody to buy that buffalo head, you know, because mm-hmm. you're not going to get good money here. And, and I sourced <coughs> it around, and there was a company out of state that travels like once a month and picks up <coughs> nothing but taxidermy stuff. Oh, really? So we got her 900 bucks for it. And, That's awesome. And then uh, fast forward to the day, this was like six months ago or whatever. Uh, about a week ago, we closed on her uh, townhome. And she's like, Sean, I don't drive on the interstate because we had to go on the north side to close the south side home. I go, I'll come pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's like, you're spending the day with me, Nancy. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Back to Kenny Boyson, though, man. Really, Kenny right. Boyson, do whatever it takes. That's awesome. He don't even know bro. I'm talking about him. But no, I know. <laughs> do do whatever it takes, man. And that that guy, uh, 
I, I remember he had a dream. He, he let me house sit for him back then. I'd make a little extra money house sitting his big dog Conan he had. And uh, they were off Geist, and they had a, their boat. His boat was on Geist, but he always wanted a house on Geist. Mm-hmm. And to this day, he's got a house on Geist. You know, he kept That's moving, awesome. he kept moving closer and closer. <laughs> and to this day, he's got a house on Geist. And, That's uh, awesome. You know, but that was his dream. He really right. wanted. That's awesome. So tell so anybody that might be listening to this, okay? What would you if they're sitting in the seat of maybe the golden handcuffs, or maybe in a predicament where they're just like they feel like they're stuck in a rut, what would you say to them? I'd say don't wait. I'd say seek out people who are you might admire. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised if you call them and try and sit down with them and talk to them. They'll, they'll more than likely talk to you. Yep. Um, uh, I think some of the best advice I got from an entrepreneur a long time ago was like, you know, I was like, hey, I want to start a mowing business now. What do I do? He said, just start it. Go buy a mower. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the LLC stuff. That'll come. Yep. You'll figure it out. Just go do it. And um, and that's the problem most people have is just doing it. Yeah. Push and play. And and if you need that encouragement to go talk to somebody that's doing it, and even if they're in the same field like I'm in, mm-hmm. I'll sit down with my peers and they want to know, how, how are you doing this? Problem is 99% of them won't do it. Really? They won't do it. Hmm. You'll tell them, I'm doing this, 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 this. You won't see them do it. Really, you know, yeah. it's it's it's, so, it's 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 mind numbing. I think that's where some people just get they stop helping mm-hmm. because they see that. To right. me, the more I talk about, the more I try to help, the more it propels me to. Yeah, I, I just I just it it I get passionate. Oh my pan of donuts, <laughs> pan of pan of donuts, uh, Thompson Road. Um, but no, uh, it, it it helps me the more I help people, and it helps mold my my craft of being the best I can be at being a real estate agent, being just a person in general Mm -hmm. that cares about people. And I want to give back. Right. If I can give back and change somebody's life, there's a, there's a gentleman, (laughs) we got married in 2010 in Jamaica. And when we got married there, there was a, all these different people from all these different States, right. And countries. Mm -hmm. So I'd never remember their names. I just say Chicago or Kentucky or whatever. Well, there's a couple from Chicago we kind of became friends with them, and, like, we've never hung out since that day, but we're all on Facebook, and we, you know, like stuff mm-hmm. back and forth. Right. That dude hit me up, like, two months ago and messaged me. said, hey, man, I'm starting my own insurance business. I knew he was in insurance. Right. I go, that's awesome. He goes, I just want to thank you. I go, what do you mean? He goes, what you've done and, and, and where you're at now, I might, I might tear up a little bit. It, it, it gave me the confidence. That's mm. awesome. It gave me the confidence to do this, and he launched it. He goes, you can't say anything yet. He's already launched it. He launched it. And I was like, man, and I've heard that from a couple other people. And I'm just like, how many more people can I can I make impressions on? That's awesome. That, you know, and, and I'll sit, man, there, just the guy at the car wash. <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm going through the car wash, the prime car wash, and they wipe your car down afterwards. And this dude's sitting there, and I see he's shaking his head. And he goes, all these, all these cars are lining up like he's pissed. And I was like, I get up there, and I was like, man, I go, what's going on, dude? I go, because there's one and two people wiping him down. It was just him. I can tell he's probably a little upset. <laughs> and uh, and I go, man, what? I go, I go. And he's just he's cards complaining about not having enough people there. I go, here's my card. I go, here's a tip. I go, call me. I go, if you, if you don't want this job anymore, let's let's see what else you can do. But right now you're in this job, and this is the way this job is. Make the most of so it. So you can't be mad at the company. No, you can't. That's yeah. just the way it is. I mean, right. run your own company. People don't show up. Sometimes people got to pick up the slack. Right. Yeah. Guy never called me. Guy never called me, but I felt like maybe I could have changed his life. Yeah. You mm. know, but everybody wants to blame the company when you're not going to change the company. Right. You right. know what I mean? For you sure. decided to work there. That's the way it is. Don't get mad about it. Change. Go do something else. But getting mad about it, and you know, obviously, other people could see it. Right. That's not doing anybody. That's not doing you any be- any benefit. Right. You, you know, and I and who knows? I never saw him after that, and who knows yeah. where he went. But you know, he'll probably get mad at the next company. And right. And it is what it is, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I, there was a book that talked about that too. It was really cool. I, I think it was Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yeah. He starts talking to his kids like he's like they're working for him for free, and the one kid's like, "Man, I'm not working for you for free no more." He's all mad at them and everything, and. Mm-hmm. And he starts talking about kind of what I just mentioned. I can't remember it all word for word, but but you know there was times I was mad yeah. at the place I worked at, mm-hmm. right? 
I mean, I, I was, you know, 20 years doing that. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, you know, they're taking this from me. Insurance is going up. And right. it wasn't the company. It was me. That's right. But who can admit that? Right. Not very many people. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy, man. Not and easy. I didn't admit it for a long time. Yeah. I'm sure I was I was probably disgruntled for a little while. Right. Um, and I apologize to anybody I might have been disgruntled with, you know, just, just not realizing it wasn't them. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. me. And uh, mm-hmm. But now, looking back to where I'm at now and, and, and the people I'm bringing on and I'm telling them, you know, hey, do this, 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 and if they're not doing it, as long as I know I'm doing what I need to do to help propel them, mm-hmm. they may blame me because that's what people do. But deep down, like, I'm not going to let that bother me. You know, mm-hmm. I had somebody do that to me early on, and uh, and I kicked myself, and I beat myself. I was like, what could I have done better? What could I have done this? And, you know, and I sharpened my my, my sword, and, mm-hmm. and I made sure I got more things in line now. And, um, but sometimes it's just not, it's not the company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yep. Well, give us a little, um, how can, if somebody's watching this, you are definitely um, well-connected in the uh, social media world, <laughs> but can, give us some of your connections so that we can we can follow you and follow what you're doing. Okay, so uh, you can you can get on a, uh, on YouTube. It's Indiana uh, Real Estate. I couldn't believe that was still out there. I just got that really? going. Yeah, Indiana Real Estate. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, just look up uh, at DanielsRealEstate.com or, or actually at Daniels Real Estate for Facebook. Um, and then you, yeah. just look, you can look up my name, Sean Daniels, for uh, I don't know what my, my, my thing is on that. Yeah, do you have your, do you want to put your number out there? Yeah, 317 uh, My website's DanielsRealEstate.com. Um, well, thanks for coming and hanging oh, out with us today. This was amazing. <laughs> it's my first like, podcast. Man. This is your first podcast? That's yeah. awesome. You guys are it. Hey, I want to do this awesome. again. I want to do this again. We're, we'll do a follow-up. I'm down. Yeah, okay. let's do it. Give us, <laughs> give, you know, give, give us a year. Let's I'm, see what you do in a year. I'm down. So g- if we do that, tell me one of your goals for 2023. Whew, I'm writing my goals right now. Uh, yeah. yeah, I told my team to write theirs too. Yeah. Uh, I don't have mine done yet. So. Okay, well. Shh, don't tell. You, you know the year. You, you, know, you know the year starts. Oh, dude, shortly. it's almost. Yeah, it's, it's, it's to me the days blend so much. So I, I for next year, um, man, really, I want to. I want to get an agent to break uh, three million. I want to get an agent to break three million. Um, my personal self, I want to uh, do better with my CRM. Okay. My, I don't work my CRM. Like okay. all, all my clientele is fear. Okay. I don't pay for advertising. In, in our industry, like, it's crazy. Like, most people pay for advertising stuff. I've just been blessed mm-hmm. with that 20 years of the car business mm-hmm. and taking care of people. I, 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 I realized I did a good job because mm-hmm. these, these clients and my coworkers and my peers. Become, so CRM, hmm. get, you know, build my CRM up. Um, That's, you don't have to give them all. I just, yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah, yeah. one. I'm, we're going to follow up two. with you. I gave you two. <laughs> we'll, we'll follow up I wish you. I had something bigger. I don't, you know. It's okay. That's good. I just want to duplicate myself. Yeah. I, I love it. Just duplicate that'll, myself. That'll be huge for 2023 if you can make it happen. Yeah. Which I totally think you not can. Not when. Not if. When. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, Not right. if. So, so I like love Jim told me that. Like, quit saying those words. Yeah. It's not if, it's when. When. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's subliminal, man. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out today with us, Oh, Sean. thank you guys. I appreciate it. Enjoy your enjoy your cups. And, yes, uh, thanks. I'm Check leave, out I'm the leaving these donuts. Can of donuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Jason, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to be back. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I, I just got I that know. one little tickle, and I couldn't. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, so, I'm glad well, glad you ran that one so. Long. Yeah, sorry, I kind of. <laughs> Turned around and you were gone. I was like, "Uh oh, yeah, I lost him." Yeah, you didn't even look at me on the way out. I was gonna be like, "Go, oh, you know, keep it moving." Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, we, I could have died, and we, you would have known, not known. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I, I'd have figured it out. <clears throat> yeah. It, yeah, when, when uh, Sean and I got to the end, we would have figured it no, out. <laughs> dude, thanks for bringing Sean on. That was he is a uh, he is a passionate he is. mover. I mean, he loves yeah, he loves I, what he does. Yeah, and I'm just sure. I love the fact that he is you know so passionate about passing that on. Like it's not just yeah. like all about him it's it's about helping grow other right. people and helping passing that um because mm-hmm. he i mean he referred to his mentor several or two of the mentors that he had talked about yeah he referred to them multiple times and how much they had encouraged him and grown him to the point where he's at and be able mm-hmm. to 
take him to right. the next level, which was awesome. And just you never know the touch you have on somebody's life. Right. I mean, one of his mentors was in a tire shop, not even his boss. Right. And he's doing real estate. Like, how does that relate? Right. And so when you have people that you can pour yourself into, you have no idea what they're going to go and do. This and you think, true. oh, I don't know that I have much to share. I don't know that I have much to give. Right. How many and times have you heard that? Yeah. A hundred times over. Right. Yeah. And so suck it up. Right. Pour into others. Well, and the <laughs> neat part about it is, is like, I mean, yes, he's in real estate now. He was in the discount tire before, but then he was able to influence somebody even not directly, but but indirectly um, through Facebook in, in the gentleman that hmm. started his own insurance. Right. So, right. you know, he talked about that, how he's influencing people. Yeah, I mean, I know he's influenced me over the last year just mm-hmm. watching so many of his positive reels and just right. him putting the content that out that he has. I just, I've appreciated it. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's all the more reason why I was excited about bringing him here is because I was excited for him to pass that on to other people. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that's totally how he operates. Like, mm-hmm. he is definitely passionate about real estate, but he is totally passionate about building others. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Which is just awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I loved the, <clears throat> you know, he got stuck in a rut in yeah. life, but he was just like, hit play. Right. Just just go for it. Get started. Get do, do mm-hmm. something. And how many people, you know, will, will ask, what do I need to do? Right. You know, how do I be successful? What do I need to do? And then they don't do it. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I just really felt challenged through that of like, I need to keep hitting play. Yep. I, I can't. I can't just think, uh, I don't know, you know, this, maybe not today, not this week, maybe mm-hmm. next, you know, I, what are you doing today? What, what's the one or two steps that you're doing this week to hit play right. on whatever you're working and toward? I think the other side of this, I mean, we didn't talk about it with Sean, but I'm sure he would, um, comment on it, but, yeah. um, those, those steps don't necessarily have to be big. They can be small. It's, it's right. not necessarily right. like, huge step for mankind kind of thing. Like, I mean, it just might mm-hmm. be something that just propels you a little bit forward. And right. if you do that a little bit <laughs> over a year, yeah. I mean, if, I mean, many people often, I mean, I, and the, the, the people that I hang out with often talk about um, TV or mm-hmm. YouTube or like right, the kids right. on YouTube, uh, like you lose a lot of time with that. Well, if you took that one thing out and just supplemented it with something, even right. if you didn't take it all out, mm-hmm. And just supplemented it with something that one step to help move you forward each week, each day. I mean, that over the span of a year mm-hmm. is just a compound effect that just right. is amazing. Right. Amazing how much it I changes mean, people. We've talked about, <clears throat> I mean, like you said, it doesn't have to be these huge steps, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've talked about the strategy of just sitting down with somebody, taking them out to lunch, having coffee with them. Right. Right. Just say your goal is like, there. I know of five people in my industry or successful people, people who I admire, I just want to sit down and pick their brain for an hour. Yep. What if on Monday, January 2nd, you had called those five people and set up any time, any date throughout the month of July, January, not July. (laughs) And by the end of January, you're like, I had five conversations this month. Right. That's a huge win. Oh, totally. You know, those aren't... Especially if those are the people that you think are going to influence you the most. Right. And how that shapes how you handle the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. What a small step to just be able to take and, you know, and just hit play on. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. That was awesome. Uh, Sean, yep. thanks again for joining us. And thank you again donuts for... And the donuts. And the donuts. And yeah, I got a shout I mean, out to Panna. Normally yeah. we start recording this little bit right as soon as the interview leaves. And right. Now, we had a couple donuts. Right? Yeah. Now the box of donuts is gone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, not completely, but we're close. That's right. That's right. So, and uh, thanks for the cups. That's awesome. Um, love the merch. Yep. So check out Sean. Totally. And hey, guys. Check us out at leadingisserving.com. Give us a like, subscribe, rate us, um, leave us a voicemail. Yep. Um, you know, do a search. Um, you can see all the YouTube videos that we've got up. You can see um, every episode all the way going back to when we started. When we were here. That's awesome. That's cool stuff. So, and uh, yeah, if you love what we're doing, uh, support us. You can um, you know send us a note, but you can also um, you know drop five bucks on on the little buy me a coffee. Yeah, uh, donate link. So yeah, uh, or buy us a donut. Hey, yeah, there you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. So, so thanks for joining us, guys. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs>